Hi guys! Happy Friday! We Good made Friday. it through the week. <laughs> <laughs> we made it through the week. And see, we brought a special guest with us to wrap up our our lives. We did one every day. So if you are hopping in now and you didn't catch the old ones, go back. We started off with student loans on Saturday. We did legal writing made easy. Then we did how to buy a house with six figure uh, student loan debt, uh -huh. employment lawyer stuff, the Brett Farr fraud. Yesterday I did, what did I do yesterday, Trace? HBCU, HBC. I saw that one, yeah. HBCU, right. And then today we're gonna talk about, is we're gonna run the gamut. We have a special guest, we're gonna ask her everything that y'all wanna know and see how much information she shares with y'all. Um, well, we want to thank Angela for joining us, the aspiring boss. She also has, she's a lawyer and has a YouTube channel as well. Um, called the, it's called the aspiring boss, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so the link's in the description box. So check that out. Check her out okay. channel yeah. as well. Check her out. We have her social media information there too. So she's graciously, graciously agreed to come on here and, and talk with our TXC fans and maybe some of her aspiring boss fans will come over here too so they can see her live um, today. So thank you, Angela, for joining us. Um, on your Friday evening. Um, yeah, of course. I'm happy to be here, guys. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And so this live, and if you um, need to catch the replay, you can, of course, play it back because it would be great advice. But we'll, we have a bunch of different front playlists on TXC, pre-law, um, law student, uh, attorney advice. So make sure you check out our different playlists um, if you haven't seen some of our other, other videos. But we will hop right into it with some icebreakers. We like well, I want to make sure if you guys are not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to our channel and Aspiring right. Boss channel. We want to say this early because some of y'all hop in and off. We want to make sure we let you know. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the thumbs up button. What it does is shows that you like it and it shows YouTube that you like it. So it shares it with the greater YouTube community. So make sure you do both of those things if you're not um, currently subscribed to either TXC Tells All or the Aspiring Boss. Yes, absolutely. Um, so yeah, we like to when we have guests on here, we like to do a little icebreaker to okay. warm them up, get them comfortable with us, so that you know we can dive in. And if you're coming into the video now, make sure you say hi in the chat box. If you have any questions, drop them in the chat box. We'll check uh, periodically in the chat box and see what you guys are saying. Um, but let us know that you're here. So, all right, Angela, you ready? Yeah, okay. I'm ready. All right, it's the Would You Rather. Okay. All right. <laughs> so we'll start off with. Granted, we know that you know you're currently a current practicing attorney, but this is would you rather think back? <laughs> would okay. you rather get a free ride to law school or guaranteed first time bar passage? Free ride to law school. Oh, amen. <laughs> that 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 student loan debt is no joke, and I know that if I put the work in, I could pass the bar without a guarantee because none of us had one, right? So there right. you go. Okay. Uh, would you rather? Do what you love and get paid thirty thousand dollars, or have a job you hate and get paid three hundred thousand dollars. <sighs> if this, if I got that free ride to law school, I would do the job that I love. Okay. For thirty thousand, I, I um, money is not everything okay. to me. Okay. All right. Would you? This is kind of a um a piggyback on my yesterday's video if you haven't watched it yesterday go back and watch it would you rather go to a pwi or an hbcu, HBCU. either for undergrad or law school either hbcu one. all the way so i went to a pwi for both and that's probably if not the top biggest regret it's in the top five my, one of my top five biggest regrets is not going okay. to an hbcu for at least one of my degrees okay okay all right. Um, and the last one, would you rather have one million followers on IG or one million follow or one million subscribers on YouTube? I think I'd go with YouTube. Um, especially like the content we do is sort of like evergreen. So people are always gonna be watching. I feel like Instagram, they see it for a couple of days and then it doesn't come back up again. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So I, I mean I didn't have any idea what she was gonna say, guys. It's all, it's like on, the, on the fly. Yeah, I didn't know about this, y'all. <laughs> so, um, it's interesting. I mean, it's good to see the different perspectives and the you know reason everybody has their own journeys and to say right. like hmm. uh, granted, you can't go back in time, but if you think about certain things like okay, that would have yeah. been funny, like you said, if I could have did an HBCU at least for one of them because to have that experience. Although you went to HBCU, right? You are. I'm sorry, what'd you say? You went to HBC, right? Yeah, for law school. Yeah, yeah. see, yeah. So, I got one of the two. So I'm like, okay, I think it was a good. Although, actually, 
I might have wanted to do it the other way around because I think yeah. the HBC undergrad experience, like the whole pledging and the, Absolutely, uh, yeah. the band and all that. Like I might have liked that, but everything happens for a reason. I got it one way or the other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I had a friend at Howard, so I got a chance to, to oh, go yeah. to my PWI for undergrad. Oh, yeah. Focus and then hop, hop down to Howard's homecoming every year. <laughs> yes. Oh, I know it was so fun. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I, I think I cheated because I didn't. <laughs> right, right. She's still I, got, I got the best of both worlds. So. Right. Yeah. Um, well, right. Okay, one more. One yeah, more. One more icebreaker. So, um, Angela, if you could teach any law school class, which one would it be and why? Hmm, that's a good question. I probably would teach some sort of like practical um, corporate law class or like M&A class. That's what I do. And I feel like there's so many things that like young associates um, in law firms could benefit from if they just had a little bit of preparation. So I probably would do that just because I know what I didn't have. So that's right. what I would do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. The practical, you know, at law school, and we talk about this on some of our other videos, not a lot of people not feeling like they got the practical experience, especially if they didn't do clinics. I know you did clinics in law school, Angela, and we did too. Yeah. Um, that help you give you something, but I think an actual class that gives you some practical experience definitely will help you not feel like, you know, you're just hopping in not knowing. Anything. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> right. All right. So kind of going from icebreakers and transitioning into, you know, the nuts and bolts of, of this live, we wanted to kind of talk about, you know, transitioning as an attorney from that zero years of experience where you feel like you don't know anything at all to then, you know, we see the brackets. OK, do you have zero to three years of experience or then mm -hmm. three to five years and then five to seven and then 10 plus? So we did a video kind of talking to some other attorneys that were at five years and then 10 years and then 15 and more. And they all had different perspectives, Ooh. all had different things to say, all had different mm -hmm. challenges. Right. And I know I watched your video, too, where you said you talked about um, my legal journey, how it started versus how it's going. So how do you feel now? What's the biggest, I guess, difference between how you feel now seven years in versus how you felt maybe zero or one years into your practice? Yeah, that's a good question. I think one of the biggest things is I just feel prepared and confident. Um, for a good amount of the beginning of my career, I felt I was not confident. And that mm -hmm. is something that I think affected me a lot. And obviously, you know, as a first year or, you know, less than first year, you don't know anything, right? Mm -hmm. But I still, even in comparison to some of my counterparts, I was a lot less confident than them. And I think I let certain things get to me that really don't matter, like mm -hmm. where I went to undergrad or where mm -hmm. I went to law school and all these things. And even though we're in the same place, my confidence level is just so much better. And that comes with time. I think right. that comes with time, experience, and just believing in myself. Um, right. But yeah, I would say my confidence level is probably the biggest thing that's changed along with you know just experience yeah that's i mean that's good that you mentioned like transparent about that because i think some people feel like oh it's just me should i not feel this way and i think it's, it's normal to feel that way but Absolutely. also to say like okay push through it and i think um once you're in a certain spaces like you don't have to prove yourself you are yeah here. <laughs> exactly i'm like wait so i went to a you know not so great law school and you went to harvard and we're in the same place right we just I, I might be a little special. I don't know. Right, right, right. Like, so basically, <laughs> I was saying, who, who's, who's in the room here? I don't know. Right, yeah. Next to each other. So, yeah, when you think about it from that perspective, I was, I was at some event the other day and they were talking about certain undergrads and they were, I'm freezing. They were talking about certain undergrads and I was just like, um, but yet I'm in the same space as you right now. And I did not go right. to what you consider like more of a top tier, but I'm talking to you. We're the, we can afford the same things at this point. Like what, so really what was the appeal? Like what, why are you seeming like seemingly thinking that you are better than me? So I had to think about that later. Like, all right. <laughs> and yeah. this is me being yeah. at yeah. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing. It comes and goes. And I'm glad, I appreciate you sharing that being transparent with people. Um, who may be experiencing that or, you know, if they experience that in the future, like, oh, I remember she talked about that. And it's, it's all good. Yeah. Like, be confident, yeah. stay in your right. Like, look them straight in the face. Like, yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So okay. that's good. All right. So I know um, you said you practice mergers and acquisitions in corporate law. I know you also did a video about, like, what's the practice areas? How do you know when you feel like you 
you're in the best practice area? Like, is it a feeling or you just like, okay, I'm good at it, so I'll stay here? Or how did you make the decision, like, this is where I'm going to be? Or even if you decide you're going to change, like, what would you say, like, I changed my specialty? Yeah, I, I definitely think there's a feeling. Well, I think, first of all, majority of people, when they come out of law school, don't have the best opportunities, right? Like, majority of people come out of law school and they just really go into the practice that they are able to get a job at. Let's just be honest. That's just how it works for us. Right. Um, so with that, I would say if you get into something and it's not, you don't feel it, it's okay. It's okay to pivot. People pivot mm -hmm. all, of, all of the time. And so it's okay to pivot. And two, I think it is a feeling. So I started my career doing real estate and finance and I liked it fine enough. I always mm -hmm. knew I was not going to be a litigator. Mm -hmm. I always knew I wanted to be a transactional lawyer and it was cool. Mm -hmm. When I was um, looking to move to Kansas City, I was looking for jobs. And Kansas City's legal market is way smaller than Houston. So I, I knew I wanted to work in, in a big law firm because I, I, I just knew I wanted to get certain experience. And so there weren't that many options. And so one of the firm, the firm that I ended up going to, it was a corporate M&A position. Right. And I'm like, well, I don't really practice that, but it's on the same spectrum. I and when it. I started doing it, I loved it. And like I said before, it was okay. And I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I could do this. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, oh, you're supposed to feel this way about what okay. you're doing. So I do think it's a feeling okay. um, for a lot of people. That feeling comes and goes, though, because sometimes I'm like, <laughs> you know, once work. you get into the career, it's like, okay, I, but I'm stressed. Like, how right, right. Stressed? I think every job is going to have some, some yeah. stress in it. So yeah. just like, which one do you want to put up with at this point? Like, I exactly. enjoy it for the most part. Exactly. It's like the 80-20 rule. Like, 80% of the time, I'm okay with it. 20% right. of the time, I'm like, Exactly. Ah. That's more <laughs> <So>, realistic. <laughs> I'm not going to get everything that exactly. I want. So, I mean, that's a Why can't we though? No, I, I didn't say it. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like they're like, why can't I just get everything perfect? But it doesn't work like that. That's the I'm going to go play the lottery yeah. when I get off here. <laughs> it's good, right, Tracy, right. are you a Virgo by any chance? Because that's how we think. No, yeah, I'm, that's a Capricorn, I'm a Virgo. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm, Capricorn, but I'm just like, why can't we have it all? I just don't understand. But it's 80-20. It When's your birthday, Angela? August 30th. Okay. Oh, I'm August 27th. See, I really? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, <laughs> I think I'm drawn to Virgos, though. I, 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 we, have, we have some type of connection going on. We have good yeah. energy. I, I love her. I, I, I love the energy. energy. Like, I can sense when I'm like, I might be like, uh, I don't know about you. I might give you one more chance, but then if my initial reaction to you is like, I'm not really messing with you. It's going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> Capricorn appreciates the directness of Virgo. Because, you yeah. know, we, we just say, hey, we have to say how it is. <laughs> this is what it is. Y'all love the punishment. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> if you guys are jumping in now, make sure you, like I say, uh, jump in the chat box and say hi. If you have any questions you want to ask for Angela, um, put them in the chat box. We'll try to get to them. Um, right now, we're just discussing certain things, um, practice areas and, um, her journey um, to be a lawyer, she's been out of law school for seven years now and trying to get the um, her perspective. Tracy and I, and I always say this when I talk to people, people just because you've gone to law school and you've been out for a long time doesn't mean you can't learn from people that have been out more recently. Things have changed. People have different experiences. Tracy and I have been out of law school for 11 years now, but that doesn't mean we can't learn from other people that have you know, been out less time than us. And so I, I think that it's important to kind of talk to other people. And you realize certain things. We're not in the same specialty, so I certainly can learn some things. Um, contrary to belief, like, all lawyers are not special um, experts in all kinds of law, right? Oh, my so God. Like, if I have some <laughs> problem with mergers and acquisitions, I would send it, refer it to Angela, because I don't right. know about mergers and acquisitions, right. employment law for Tracy, veterans law for me. So I'm just like, it's, it's good to talk to other people and see those people in those particular spaces, because we're not experts in all the spaces, contrary to what is portrayed. <laughs> right no ser seriously say that again like, yes, um, we go right. down a certain path we do not know every law right. <laughs> it's not, it is not like a handbook right it's, it's, it's not we're, like, we're not general practitioners like right. doctors right like they could do but they still they still they refer still to specialize. Specialize. They're like, yeah. okay this is above my my level of expertise referring it over so that's essentially what lawyers do as well so if you guys are pre uh pre-law current law students you, you'll get to know other people in other specialties that you know Make nice with them because you mm -hmm. might meet them for certain things in the future and you guys can kind of, um, you know, bounce things off each other. So keep that in mind. Trace, you mm -hmm. want to? Yeah, Angela. So next question, if you and this is not really a, a icebreaker, but 
if, if you could go back to law school, so going back in time, if you could change one thing, one decision that you made or one um, thing that you did in law school, if you could change it, now knowing what you know at seven years out, what would it be? I probably would have retook the LSAT and went to a different school or retook the LSAT and had them give me more money. Um, mm -hmm. Because yeah, either way, more money. <laughs> I, I, it's it's the student loans for me that right. just yeah yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. So I would have known. I tell people this all the time. Like I didn't know, but I was like, oh, I'm not paying for an LSAT course, and I wish I would have figured out how I could get the money up to pay for this LSAT course so that I can, um, because I'm not good at standardized testing, right? So yeah. when I realized that, and I did it for the bar exam, like paid somebody to teach me how to take the bar exam. If I yeah. would have did that for the LSAT. I probably would have scored higher and who knows um, where my journey, but as far as like perhaps being able to um, ask for more money would be a big thing too. So for those of you that like are struggling, I'm on the Facebook page for LSAT and they're, they're struggling, like pay a course and that's what it requires of you Yeah, because it's not intuitive for everybody. So if you might, if everybody's not a good test taker. Don't let that, um, you know, distract you from doing what you want to do. And right. I can help you figure out how to do it then. And it's worth the investment. I mean, and, you know, I think we make them, you know, as a student, it's hard because you don't have, a lot of people don't have, you know, a steady job, but right. you're able to get things that you want. You got the new Fenty makeup, you got all these other things. Invest in the LSAT class because it right. could literally change the trajectory of your career. Right. Um, there's, I, I actually really do enjoy the things that I do for work. Mm -hmm. And I really don't feel tied to my job. You know, if I wanted to leave tomorrow, mm -hmm. I could comfortably. But mm -hmm. a lot of people are tied to a job because they are having to take pay off their student loans. Right. And if you could just kind of skip that, you can go into right, doing exactly what you want to do. Right. Yeah. yeah, student roles. Our student loan playlist is by far the most popular on our channel. <laughs> we talk about our journeys, and I took the public interest um, student loan path. So working somewhere for 10 years and then having your loans forgiven but there are other paths and if you didn't work somewhere that's public interest or nonprofit, and you don't have that guaranteed of the loans being paid off what are you going to do like you right. have to hear me you, know, <laughs> you have right. like the shackles to you know to you so you, you can go a little mm -hmm. bit but you ain't gonna go too far because you yep. gotta pay back this sometimes six-figure debt so and that little 10k that Biden gave is not doing much for a um, lawyer. Yeah. And for a lot of lawyers, they're not even eligible because right. they make too much money. So, right. yep. Mm -hmm. yep. so, so I mean, so many problems. Student loans affect a lot of people. And mm -hmm. um, although Tracy talks about how, like, you know, you can still do certain things, it's still kind of like that little thing that's still on your shoulder. Like, yeah. hello, I'm still here. You bought the house, but I'm still here. Right. <laughs> yes. I'm still here. Like, mm -hmm. so not had that at all kind of like changes everything. So, I can yeah. really see what you're saying about student loans <laughs> yeah, I mean, student loan and, and having it so um what so shifting from like something that you would change what's something i guess in six seven years you've been out that you can say is your biggest accomplishment like i feel good about this particular case or this particular milestone i hit in my career what's some positive thing um hmm i mean i like so in my career not in law school in my career right since you've been out of loss. Hmm. Um, one of my favorite things about what I do, and, and I've had this happen in several instances, is where I really connect with my clients. And so I, I do, I work on really cool deals. Mm -hmm. You know, like I just did a deal where it was like almost a billion dollars. Like that's really cool, right? But that gets kind of old once you've done it a few times. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't get the money, so, right. you know. Right. Right. Um, but connecting with clients, as an M&A lawyer, a lot of times we are representing sellers, right? So mm -hmm. it, uh, you guys, as an employment lawyer, you probably work, Tracy, you probably work with your clients on a consistent basis. Yeah. A mm -hmm. lot of times my clients can be one and done. And so they we sell their company and then, you know, they might send a Christmas card or something, but we don't really talk to them anymore. Mm -hmm. And so one thing that I have really grown to love when I can connect with a client and really gain that relationship where they like look to me or call me for other things, um, especially as an associate, you know? So yeah, I've been out seven years, but I'm still pretty junior in comparison to the people I work with. I work with people who've been practicing for 30 years, mm -hmm. you know, okay. 20, 30 years. So 
call, be, me being the point person, even though I'm the most junior person or the second to most junior person on the team, mm -hmm. um, I would say is one of the best feelings ever. So it's not a huge accomplishment, but it's mm -hmm. those types of things make me feel good. Okay. Tracy, you want to ask her about, because we talked about, we had a panel with Cameron Monet. She's also another YouTuber. Oh, yeah, I love Cameron. Yeah, she was on here. We did a panel of, um, what was it called? Confessions, Confessions of, of a Black Lawyer. lawyer. Yeah. yeah. So basically, piggybacking on what you said as far as feeling like you're the point person and connecting with your clients, have you been in positions where you felt like as a Black attorney, as we know, Black attorneys are make up less than 5% of all attorneys and Black women attorneys make up 2%. So have you yeah. ever felt in a position since you are the per point person that sometimes a junior where you felt like being a black lawyer um, affected how they interacted with you? In, in a, a good way or a bad way? And either oh, way. That way. Okay. <laughs> um, not really clients. No, honestly, oh. I, 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 I'm thankful because I know this is not most people people's experience, but oh. I haven't. But I have had situations where I felt like I was being chosen for something mm -hmm. to meet some sort of, mm -hmm. I don't want to say quota, but something <laughs> along those lines mm -hmm. and not actually chosen and actually, uh, because chosen is not the right word, Pro propped up as if I would be working on a certain matter. Because I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but a lot of clients these days, a lot of companies these days, they want to see like, well, who's doing my matters? Are diverse people working on my, especially when we have our black general counsels. They're okay. like, I want to see okay. who's working on the matters. I want to make sure people that look like me uh, right. are working on these matters. Mm -hmm. And so I have had in the past, my name used for matters that I'm like, I didn't work on that. Oh. And then found out about that. That was actually done to me um, at my first firm, which I, great firm, but yeah, it, it, like, it that just happen and I didn't, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. Uh, no, if I if you use my name, I need to work on it. Right, you know. Right, right. Um, but clients, no. I actually um, I do pretty well just socially. I'm an extrovert, okay. so I haven't had those situations. And you guys have probably went through this too, where as black women, we have been as black lawyers, mm -hmm. we have been in so many spaces throughout our whole life, where we're the one of few. Right. And so we've gotten comfortable with being in those environments because we're just so used to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, I would say about my current firm, though, it's the most black people I've ever um, okay. had. I mean, it's a large organization, so okay. that's why. But uh, we recently had a um, minority attorney retreat, and it was such a good feeling to see all these other black people. Right, like hey, um, y'all. <laughs> like you know, it's 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 firm wise, so they're not all in the same office as me. Right. But um, this has been the best experience I had. And there's still a lot of work to do, but they mm -hmm. acknowledge that. And so that's. It's a power you yeah. 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 I do yeah. feel like. So not tide. clients, but internally, yes, I've had those issues. Okay. Yeah, I feel like the tide is changing, at least in, in my practice in employment discrimination with the clients. I've had a lot of clients, I would say within the past three to five years in my practice that have said I was seeking a African-American attorney. I was seeking a minority attorney because. I mean, a lot of with the issues I'm dealing with is our discrimination. So they yeah. want somebody who they feel like can relate to them from that aspect. But they also just like, I want to support black business. I want to support yep. black attorneys. So I've seen that. And I feel like it's been different lately versus when I first started in my practice. It was more of a, I mean, I got the, are you the paralegal all the time? Right. So yeah. Like, I'm yeah. Or meeting with my notepad and introducing myself and they're like, well, when's the attorney going to come in? And I'm just like, really? Excuse me? Like, yeah. Where are we going? But now I feel like it's getting a little better. Not, And I'm not saying at all that everything is just great and everything's mm -mm. changed, but at least I'm seeing more people giving us, you know, that respect that, you know, we, we deserve and we've earned. So that's good that you're in an environment where you feel like, you know, at least they're doing the work that they have work to do, but it's looking better. Yeah. I think the client's demand, I think the client demanding it is what's making it change. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Because I just, I, I personally can't think of a reason why it is the way it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I really can't. Mm -hmm. um, it might be like, you know, I think the pressures of what's going on in the, you know, in the world, I think that kind of influences because people are more bold about, they can be bold about a lot of things, right? But yeah. bold, like you said, like they're intentional about I want to support black businesses and money talks, right? If yeah. they're saying they want to support people who have black um, attorneys on their, we lost Tracy, black attorneys on their um, 
and they're employed, then they're like, okay, well, they come in with their money. We're going to give them what they want. So that is in turn helping other people, you know, adopt yeah. the effect of it. So, I mean, that's a good thing. If yeah. you guys are, are on the chat now, we want to make sure we have time for questions. If you have any questions for Angela or Tracy and I, make sure you hit them in the uh, chat box. So just say hi if you're jumping in. Yeah, say hey. So we know you're here. <laughs> we know you guys are here somewhere. You might be in the replay game, but if you're here somewhere, we're um, jump in the chat box and say hi. While Tracy's internet is kind of working itself together, I'm going to hop <laughs> on to the, to the next question. Um, taking it back to law schools, I know you have, your, I guess your playlist on YouTube is similar to ours, where you talk to pre-law, law students, and beyond. Um, while you were in law school, what's something that you learned during law school that you has followed you up until now that you're like, I remember this, and I will always mm. remember this, and it's sticking with me now as a practicing attorney? Hmm, that's a good question, because... I don't yeah, know. I mean, none of my law school classes. I'm sorry. Um, I was just saying that's a good question because I mean I can't really think of any of my law school classes that I actually use today. Like even contracts, it's just such on a basic level in law school mm -hmm. that it doesn't really af affect me today. Honestly, the things that I remember from law school are all things that that don't necessarily come up in my everyday. Oh, okay. Like you know, like principles like right. defamation for some reason i just can't forget defamation so every time i hear of like a defamation case i'm like "Ooh, defamation is very hard to prove i remember that in law school right. but i would say in my day-to-day -day, it would be just kind of foundational uh concepts and principles or like legal writing skills like those kind of core things that you mm. need but i can't think of any class that i'm just like oh yeah i use this <laughs> Well, I mean, even like professor, I, I talked yesterday about I had some professors that I really um, connected with and they just so happen to be black professors. But they they said things to me that made me fit, remember to this day. So I know one of my professors is contract law and I still speak to him to this day. He always put like an African proverb on the board when he came in every day. And oh, okay. What are you going to talk about today? Yeah. So he put up the first day of his class, struggle to farm, gifts will not satisfy your needs. And basically it means like almost like teach a man a fish kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so he basically says, like, you got to struggle. You're going to be struggling. So every time we would face some kind of difficult situation in um, class or anything, it would be like, struggle to farm. We got to get through this. The <laughs> so I, we still remember like, our whole statement will use that as a reference. When things are hard, struggle to farm. Guess will not satisfy your needs. And so we kind of took that. And I was like, it's funny how you remember certain things. This is from the first day of law school back in 2008 that we still remember Tracy. You remember Struggle to Farm? Yes, I do. Sorry, y'all. I had some technical difficulties, but no I was <laughs> Struggle to Farm. I was asking Angela why you had um hop up was one thing she remembered about law school, and she was saying she remembers like foundational things. And mm -hmm. I was saying, well, like the struggle to farm for me, like that was something I connected with my professor with. I know for you, like the maybe professor yes. or legal writing professor, yes, maybe you something that she, <laughs> she was another one that was kind of tough. And I don't know, it was yeah. like Angela's mentioned like defamation was a thing she remembered or like the concepts of legal research and writing, but is there anything from law school, Tracy, that you kind of still think about to this day? Yeah, I think, uh, so I had a legal writing and moot court professor who would always talk about hand-to-hand -hand combat, like that's how you want to have your facts kind of interchanging with the law and make sure that they make sense, that they communicate to each other because you want your audience, whether it be a judge or a client or prospective clients to understand the law that you're talking about, but also how that relates to their particular facts. So, I, I mean, everything I write, I'd be like, okay, hand-to-hand -hand combat. Hand-to-hand. -hand. <laughs> <it up. laughs> how, how do I meet How do I meet you? Your facts flowing this? out here and your law flowing <laughs> out here. They have to work together in order right. to get your point across and, you know, make sure that your end goal is matching. So, right. um, that's my thing, hand-to-hand -hand combat. I do remember Struggle to Farm, though. That was a good, that was a good <laughs> We talked, to, well, at least I talked to both of those professors still to this day. And like, I just ch check on them every so now, every now and then. And it's also a good thing just to say as a side, it's a good thing to keep in touch with professors because even when you're going for stuff in the future, if you want to, I know I was applying for some position that I did not get or the, uh, or the um, Texas board and you need a recommendation from certain places. You want to have people that you can connect with, like people True. that you know personally, People from your past that can attest to you as a lawyer. So if you have law professors that you still speak to, those that are people that you can reach back and get recommendation letters from um, if needed. So keep keep in touch with people so that you can have that automatic, like I know who I can ask for if I need a recommendation for certain things. So um, that's important. Let me see if we have people. 
hopping in to say hi. Sharon Leeds. Hi, Sharon. Hey, Sharon. Thanks for joining. Mrs. Matthews. Hi, Mrs. Matthews. Hi. Um, so, yeah, I think it's important to keep in touch. And I remember certain things. And you'll remember when you have good experiences and you remember when you have negative experiences, right? Yeah. Yeah. When y'all said that, I thought of it wasn't mine, but there was a girl and she became the valedictorian. Um, mm -hmm. But the first day in crim law, the professor just got her. She didn't know. He asked her what um, what the rule for murder was. And mm -hmm. she didn't know. And he had her standing up there for, felt like an hour. Wow. And so I know that I still remember murder. Uh, the common law <laughs> rule for murder is the killing of another person with malice of forethought. Right. <laughs> right. Right. I did like, not want to be caught flipping like that. <laughs> so, right. yeah. yeah. I mean, that's it's it's part. Hey, Zed, Free Dad, Dad. Dad has a um, YouTube channel too. He's a lawyer and he yeah. has a personal finance channel. He also does like reaction videos. So if you guys are, are you know, check him out on his page. So thanks for supporting us, Marcus. Um, mm -hmm. Marcus today. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I would, I, I would not ever forget murder. <laughs> <laughs> Never forget that. Angela, I did have a question for you that's it's, it's related, but I know you, you know, you're heavy in the YouTube influencer market and I follow you on IG as well. Um, what made you want to kind of take your legal knowledge and kind of your journey in your legal career and put it out on a social media platform in that way? Like, did you have a moment where you were like, I really want to do this or was it something that happened? Yeah. So I think, uh, the biggest thing for me is just trying to be a resource that I didn't have and I wish I had. Mm -hmm. So I kind of started doing kind of, kind of what you guys do in the sense of you guys talk about law, but you guys also talk about personal finance, which is super important to me because I made some really bad <laughs> financial decisions it, like first coming out of school. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it, the intent there was really to just be a resource for like young, you know, young grads to not make really bad financial decisions. And then I think I did a video about like a day in the life of a lawyer and it just kind of, I, it didn't blow, blow up, but it was the most exposure I'd ever gotten. And mm -hmm. I realized that there was a need for that. Um, mm -hmm. For some reason there's a, and I, actually I know the reason, there's a lot of people who talk about law school, but there wasn't a lot of people who talk about being a lawyer or who are already mm -hmm. lawyers. And I know why it's because we're busy. <laughs> <laughs> and also lawyers on social media is a new thing. Like you don't see that a lot. So mm -hmm. it was really trying to be like a resource that I wish I had when I was yeah. in law school. That's great. Yeah. And it's what you said, because I saw your day in the life video. And I mean, I've been like Larissa said, we've been out 11 years and I watched the whole thing. And I was, you know, just to kind of see because it's something that you don't get a chance to see what other even other lawyers what their day right. looks like. like yeah. Does it look like mine or does it look yeah. different in mm -hmm. reality? And I think, you know, you do a really good job of it. I watched Cameron Monet's Day in the Life, too. Yeah. And she does a good job as well of like, it's real. Like this, y'all getting in the car. You're getting to work, you're doing things that you need to do in the house. You know, it's like a real day. So I think it kind of, like you said, it's a resource that you, we definitely didn't have. There was no seeing what a day in the life of a lawyer looks like, especially right. if you look like us. What right. Does it, what does it really look like? So yeah, I think it's. I think your channel is awesome. I think it's awesome that you decided Thank to you. do that and that it's authentic. Because you know, I mean, I've seen some other channels where it's like, I can't get a feel for what it is or you know, really. Yeah. Like, what your day and is really like. And so I, think I think people do that to protect themselves because you do get the criticism or people like, oh, this is the production quality. And I'm like, well, this is my real life. I mean, <laughs> if I can stage it, but y'all know we don't have time to be right. doing all of that. Like right. you, you kind of right. sometimes get what you get with, you know, right. with what we do. And it, it's, it's the real deal. Cause when you get out in law school, it's, you know, so many people look at being a lawyer is like, this glamorous thing. And it's really, really not. It's a rewarding career, but yeah. we're just like everyday people are, you know, right. it's not shiny. So yeah. <laughs> I think that's, it, it does make it more relatable to see people that look like you and like, even on it, IG, it gives, IG gives you little snippets of it. So yeah. you more of like, okay, I can do a little snippet real quick, but um, on YouTube kind of give a more in-depth, like, this is what it's going to be like to be a lawyer. So um, yes, you will be working late night sometimes. You will have yeah. a lot of reading. If you yeah. don't like reading, don't become a lawyer. <laughs> so. Yeah, like one of y'all reels that y'all did recently about like, it was like, 
Monday after you just worked all weekend. I'm like, oh my God, that that literally was my weekend. And I was like, I, I can relate. Like right, that yeah. is literally what my life was just like. Right, right. It's Monday. Tell y'all, don't say we didn't tell you. Right. It was Monday just yesterday, I feel like. Like, you know, what was the right. difference? We got some comments up here, y'all. Um, Miss Matthew said, When I was a girl, Matt Lock, Perry Mason inspired me to want to be a lawyer even later. <laughs> When I was in my 20s, Maxine Shaw reignited that desire, yet didn't mm -hmm. return to school till I was in my 40s. Um, right. I know, Dorita, do you want to take Matlock? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a Matlock Perry Mason um, girl. I, that's what I, I enjoy. I'm an old lady inside. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I know <laughs> Maxine. I don't Maxine, know who Perry Mason is. Maxine yeah. Shaw is from Living, not Living Color. Max um, Maverick from Living Single. Living Single. Yeah. Living single. Um, yeah, and then her. the Cosbys, you know, we have... Um, the co Miss Cobby was a lawyer and then she was married to a doctor. So like we saw some portrayals of black women lawyers, but not as much as, and so I guess it's good to see people in those spaces. Um, R. Willis, hi, thanks for joining. It's wonderful to hear from 2% women minority lawyers who've been in the practice for a while. Yes, we're here yeah, guys, we exist. <laughs> even though it doesn't seem like a lot, you got a lot today on the on the chat. So yeah. Um, Miss Matthews has a question, who inspired y'all? So, oh no, she says, who inspired me then? Barry Sheck Esquire, his Innocence Project organization. I just knew I'd graduate and go work from him. Got 95 credits in finances and had to bow out. <laughs> Too much. Time. Okay, well, thanks for sharing. We appreciate you. But she did ask who inspired y'all. I, I oh, didn't want to be Max the Maverick, um, but cool. I actually I interned at the Cochran firm. So, um, oh, I, wow. Yeah, That's I awesome. Yeah, so, and that was an undergrad. So, I, I feel like. You know, I always kind of saw him, you know, he was larger than life, especially in New York. Um, yeah. So just working with the, even the attorneys in there who weren't as famous as him. But I mean, the attorney who interviewed me, her name was Tracy and she did employment law. So I was like, maybe, maybe that could be me. And I, and I yeah. didn't, didn't even went to law school yet. So I think, you know, I had some like, you know, those larger than life famous attorneys, but also like regular people that I interned with that I was like, if she could do it and she looks like me, I could do it too. What about you, Angela? Um, I didn't really have any like people that I was like, oh, I want to do that because I've seen them do it. But my grandmother is she has a JD, she has two PhDs, she oh, she wow. is a degreed woman, and she always she went to law school but never practiced. And yeah. so I wanted to kind of carry her dream forward. And she lives through me even right. to today. And so that, that was probably the person that inspires me is my grandmother. That's wonderful. I yeah. mean, I think my my grandmother didn't, she didn't finish college. She ended up having children and she, you know, she's no longer alive, but that was back in the day when like most of those women stayed home and took care of the kids. But I think she was also proud that I went out there and did it because going to school in her age, like she didn't yeah. know doing it. So it was like, like you said, she's kind of living, like she lived vicariously through me. Like she was very supportive of my journey to want to go to be a lawyer and like, and I didn't know what I was doing. I was just like, I know what I want to do. And I don't know how I'm gonna get there. We did not have YouTube then. And so right. I had to figure it out. And so um, she was supportive of that. So I think Tracy interviewed at the Cochran firm Johnny Cochran, I was like, I want to be the next Johnny Cochran. Although I love that. <laughs> I, want, I want to be the next Johnny. And this is with my limited knowledge of what a lawyer really is, right? Right. I wanted to be the next Johnny Cochran. And I'm like, I, I don't even um go to court. <laughs> I was like, but I still wanted to be the, the next Johnny Cochran. <laughs> oh, hey, Amy Sue. Uh, what was the application process like for the aspiring boss first job? Okay. <laughs> That's funny that you can call me Angela. It's just my YouTube name. But, um, so like my first real job, like out of law school came via an internship. So um, after my first semester in law school, after your first semester, you kind of apply for internships for the first summer after 1L year. Mm -hmm. And so I applied for an internship and got an internship at a law firm. And then they invited me to come back the next year, um, and then I started there. So it wasn't it wasn't really a crazy interview uh, application process. It was uh, through on campus interviews at my law at my law school. Okay. So that's a popular journey, I guess, for people who are mm -hmm. taking that route. Like on campus interviews are important, and so you basically knew after your first year where you were going to work after you graduated. 
Yeah, well, so after I knew I would go back, but I actually worked at another firm, so I didn't know for sure. But I kind of, I kind of was feeling pretty comfortable that I would okay. have a, a job. Yeah, that's a good feeling yeah. because I know you know the whole point. You go to law school, you want to have a job when you get out, so it's a good feeling to know like you have some opportunities, some choices to figure out where you're gonna go and in practice because you know some people don't practice, but those who want to have a job, it's, it's yeah. a good feeling to know like. Okay, I may have this option or this option. So. Yeah, it was a great feeling. It, it honestly, it was one of the best feelings ever. But one thing that I've realized, especially now being out for so long, is that even if you don't get that opportunity, it's gonna come. Mm -hmm. And so, for anybody who has watched my my channel um, or just seen me, and I kind of have realized that I kind of speak only from my perspective, and I do that purposely because I don't like speaking about things I don't know. Mm -hmm. But one thing I do want to stress is that's not the only way. And there are so many ways and it'll come and it'll happen even if it doesn't happen as easily as that. Right, yeah, right. That's, that's true, that gives people hope because it's right. not one, there's no one solution to everything. So, and I took the um, federal government approach route, traces in private practice, but she didn't do big law route. So you have people from three different journeys yes. and all successful, right, in their yeah. own right, but took different journeys. So this is like, Proof is in the pudding. Yeah, you know, that was not really one job. I was definitely jobless. I had no job when I when I graduated law school, and I fell at the bar. So I, you know, all sorts of different different routes, <laughs> different things you can that can happen to you, but you can still make it work and make it happen. I mean, absolutely. I think for a lot of people, the personality to make it through law school, most people are pretty determined. Different yes. ways, but so you know, like Angela said, it's not going to look exactly the same for everybody, but you can, it will happen. Right, right. Absolutely. Right. So uh, before we let Angela go, is anything like you want to leave with our viewers? Um, just any words of, I know you've given words of advice throughout, but is anything like one thing you want to leave with our viewers before we sign off for the night? Yeah, sure. So uh, specifically for the people who are about to graduate and about to start their career, or just remember this for when you do, two pieces of advice I would leave with you is one, to find a good mentor. Um, somebody investing in you and your career can literally change the trajectory of your career. And it's super, super important, especially if you are somebody who looks like us. It is so important um, for somebody to invest in you. Um, the second thing I would say is take the time to invest in like your practice area, your craft outside of like normal work hours. So outside of, depend it, it, it'll, it will depend on what kind kind of job you go in, but say you're at a law firm, at a law firm you typically are getting assignments from partners or whatever. Mm -hmm. Take time to learn about your practice area outside of those assignments and it will pay off later. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Those are my two things. Do your homework. <laughs> do your homework when you're off the do your homework off the clock so that when you're yeah. in the clock, you like it can make things a little bit more easier for you. Yeah. So yeah. Those are good, those are good tips. So you guys heard it here first. Remember if you just tuned in. Um, check out Angela on her channel, The Aspiring Boss. And if you're not currently subscribed to TXC Tells All, hit the subscribe button and hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to hit that button before you leave on out of this uh, video of you guys are on the current <laughs> chat now. Thank you to all our uh, guests who chatted and engaged. We have Sharon Leeds, Mrs. Matthews, Amy Sue, Debt Free Dad, R. Willis. Thank you all for um, joining in on the chat box. And again, thank you, Angela, for sharing the time with us. Hopefully thank you, guys. guys. Have a nice Friday. Thank you for your buttoning up our week of lives and hopefully we're not so tired that we don't offer you any videos next week <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right guys bye Thanks everybody <laughs>